And so it's like, I've actually failed at becoming a, a professional <laughs> musician. I'm just a hobbyist, but, but I think it's also when I started periphery, you know, I had a full-time job and, and I loved doing music in my free time. And it was very, it was very much just like a, just a pure form of self-expression. There was what nothing. were you doing for work back then? I, I, when I first started, I was working at Radio Shack. I was doing okay. This is like two thousand nine ish or so. Oh no, no, that would be like two thousand five or six. Yeah. Oh okay. I thought it, so. Was Bulb separate? I thought perif- I thought Bulb turned into Periphery. Is that not right? It was always this kind of like fast and loose thing. Like the idea was Bulb was my solo stuff, and Periphery was whatever the band was gonna be. Oh okay. Um, but you've used some Bulb stuff or periphery totally, right totally okay. yeah it's like if it would it was like periphery was what i was investing in so if there was ever an idea that that wanted to get used all the bulb stuff and that's still the case it's not necessarily called bulb but like you know i still do write a lot of stuff or demos or whatever uh anything the band wants the band can take you know and 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 there have been cases of like things that i thought i was going to save for like my solo album for example but the band wanted it it's like all right cool you know we'll we'll use it for that instead or 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 whatever um the 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 sort of real projects will always take precedence over like bulb or any solo stuff because i could just write more you know right so when did music become your full-time job then I would say it it was probably around like 2009 yeah in like 2010 around then when when periphery started to tour and I couldn't really like hold down a full-time job and tour uh and one thing that happened was I accidentally became a producer by by doing the animals as leaders album you know which really was just a way to get Tosin to not quit music because that whole situation was so frustrating to him that he was he was threatening to like quit music i think move to to sweden and become a teacher or something with his girlfriend at the time and i was like that sounds great and all but i've you know i don't really believe in god or anything but i think you were put on earth to like play guitar dude <laughs> like yeah that would be kind of a loss for humanity. Be, and he would be a great philosophy teacher i mean like sure. we, we we definitely talk a lot about that stuff and, and chat about that he's very very intelligent and well read with that kind of stuff so i think he would do well but not to the degree that he is like this like force of nature as a musician and a guitarist. So that that is definitely the correct path. And that's why um, I was working at the container store at that time. And I was like, just pay me enough money to where I could take a month off work and we'll do this album uh, so that you don't have to quit music. Um, <laughs> and then, I am a fan and of the container the, store. Sorry. Um, I am a fan of the container store though. <laughs> yeah, you got that alpha shelving in there. It's It's very, yeah, it's relaxing. <laughs> I enjoy it. Yeah, no, I mean, it was that was a, that was a solid job. I preferred working at Radio Shack because it was commission, and oh. that's where I learned how to sell. And, I see. You know, that makes sense. You, that's where you learn the beauty of like, well, if you sell efficiently, you don't have to work as many hours. Mm-hmm. I was working like four, six hour days a week and making more. And and I I remember trying to get a, a job at Guitar Center, but they didn't want me. So my friends who did get a job. That's hilarious in hindsight. It, it is kind of funny in hindsight, yeah. but it was better because I could walk to work. Um, I could walk to um, to Radio Shack. Uh, so I didn't have a car. My overhead was pretty low. Uh, and uh, and yeah, and like I just would work four days a week, about six six hour shifts. And that's that's all I really needed to to make ends meet. And then the rest of the time was just for music. So it worked out pretty well. But you did like when you were, you know, a teenager or whatever, your goal was to do music full time. Uh, like in in the way that any like teenager like dreams of things, it was like, OK, dream. I didn't start playing guitar till I was like about 13 or 14. Like I started on drums uh, and uh, and yeah, like that's when I sort of discovered like music in a way where where I thought, hmm, this this would be really sick if that was my job. But again, the the dream of it and the reality of it couldn't be more different so i didn't really know what i was getting into and i think you know i say this i say this now maybe only semi seriously but i think if i knew everything that went into it and how much luck goes into it and how much just being in the right place at the right time i don't think i would have tried doing music cuz it's insane that it worked at all you know well i think you did kind of uh, maybe inadvertently sort of lay the template for basically how, I don't know, like 
especially in metal, so many independent musicians do things now as far as being, you know, a one man band, you know, going back to like the bold days or whatever, building your community like you did on, you know, the forums and stuff like that, producing everything yourself, really being just this self-contained thing um, and, you know, using the tools that were available to you at the time, even though back then they were a lot shittier than they are now. And the, you know, the whatever old people would tell you that you can't use amp sims and all that stuff that they said back then, you really did kind of, I, I mean, there were other, you know, Meshuggah again, obviously did a lot of those same things as well, but I think maybe more than anyone else in metal that I can think of, you really did kind of blaze that trail. Um, there was a bunch of, there was a bunch of us, there was a group of us like, and, and in, in that group was like, uh, John Brown from Monument, yep. Ackle from Tesseract, yep. Chimp Spanner, who's been like starting to re-release music again. And it makes me really happy. Cause oh, he, nice. it, it, we all, we all kind of secretly agreed that he was the best <laughs> at it, you know? Uh, and he is, he's, he's insane. Um, but yeah, it was us just kind of finding this, this tool and being like, that's interesting wonder what we could do with this, you know, and just kind right. of in real time finding out. And those guys kept me on my toes, man, because they're all so talented. And I just felt like I was clearly the worst out of the group um, that that, you know, I'd hear the demos, I'd hear the production quality, like and how well the drums were programmed and how cool the guitar tone was. And I'd listen to what I was doing. I'm like, oh, my God, like I don't I was have- listen to the fell silent demo from 2005. Yeah. It sounds fucking insane. It sounds so modern. You know, I I listened to that album. Or I was like kind of perusing through it recently, and I was like, man, that this holds up. Like it absolutely does. And that was a that was a big album, and like you know that was like that's why like I think like to some degree like Brown and Ackle were always like a step above for me because they're like they're in a real band like right the rest of us are just fakers we just post on forums right i was like playing shows like i was seeing videos of them playing shows i'm like god damn they sounded great live like they were perfect yep. and i was like all right well you know i it just made me feel like very small and like man i had to really work to to try to do anything that was uh worthwhile and i always felt like i was coming short you know so but it was good it kept me on my toes and it kept me working hard you know uh, it kept me honest what would you if anything what would you do differently now like you know if you could go back to you know your 2005 self or whatever would you do anything differently i don't think so um i'm sure there's like more efficient ways to to do things but i'm pretty stubborn and like sometimes the best way to learn is the hard way you know um i also on a philosophical level as long as you're generally happy it's very hard to regret your past because it all kind of yeah it's you to where you are um there there's many examples of in a vacuum regrets i have or things i wish i could do differently but then if i were to logically play out how those things because sometimes they're usually the things you regret is because it's like what feels like a pivotal moment but then if you were to actually logically play that out from there it would actually send you off on a completely different path to where you may be somewhere 